Hi, I'm Siobhan. Welcome to Blind Girl Vlogs. Now on this channel, I talk about all things blind related from the most funny to the serious to the embarrassing and all of the in between. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about a few things that might be triggering for some. So I'm going to give you a trigger warning now. So if it's not suitable for you at this time, please do click out and come back and check out my videos in the future. So I'm going to be talking about mental health, eating disorders and bereavement. So if those areas are something that you're not able to listen to right now, I totally understand. Do click out and I hope to see you again when a video is more suitable for you. So 2022 really hasn't been a great year for me. It started with my gran being very, very unwell. And for many of my followers, if you follow me, know that my gran was my rock, she was my total lifeline and from very very young I had a very special bond with her and she was a role model to me, she was my my hope, my inspiration and she gave me that strength to, to be the person I am today. She encouraged me to do everything that I wanted to do in my life and she gave me the push when I needed that push and she gave me the talk when I needed the talk and back in January she was very very unwell and she was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and she became very very sick very quickly and it was very devastating obviously it's heartbreaking for me because my gran was my life she was my world and she always was um, and over the year, over the weeks of her being very unwell, it was apparent that she, she didn't have long. And as you can imagine, having someone you've always trusted, you've always been able to pick up the phone and speak about the good, the bad, the ugly and the beautiful. I knew that that wasn't going to be for very long for me. So I needed to, to try and be as strong as I could. And it was a very hard, hard time. It still is a very hard time. Um, I was able and I felt very blessed and lucky to see her as much as I could. At weekends, I would go and see her and we would have chats. And I was able to have that conversation and say goodbye when she was still quite with it. Um, and she said to me, she said, just remember the fun times that we've had and go on and do great things which is why it's important for me to sit down here and speak to you about bereavement about how to cope and adapt to a new world a new life without that person you've really kind of had in your life now it's important to me to be real and to be honest and to be open with you guys because there's you know it's so many times where i've come on and i've just put on a brave face and a smile and, you know, underneath, there are things happening, things going on that you don't necessarily know about. But actually, showing who you are as a person makes you real, in my opinion. And we all go through times of uncertainty. We all have those moments of despair and heartache. And we all have to go through bereavement. That That is just life. And there are so many things that... I've had to kind of contend with this year. I won't be speaking about all of it in today's video, but the three main areas that I want to talk about, I've, st I've said at the start of this video. So going from having someone who's always by your side to nothing is really, really hard. And my gran, she was like a strong ox. She had five children she was an independent woman she raised them mostly on her own she she had a job she kept that job and she was a hard working woman she was she was really a tough person and what a great role model for me having her in my life and she always encouraged me to be the best version of myself and to go on and do things that I want to do regardless of my disability, regardless of my impairment, she said, you put your mind to it, you can achieve it. And this is why I'm here sitting to you today, talking about how I'm hopefully kind of turning 
what has been a heartbreaking situation into something where I feel like she's going to be proud. She's going to be proud of what, what I'm doing. You know, she's, she's there with me. Whatever you believe, whatever spiritual things you believe or not, you know, you, you know in your heart what, what you feel and what you think. And I know that she's with me. And having, having that is a, is a huge relief for me, knowing that she's there in whatever form. So it has been a very hard road. And there are some days that I can sit and I can be like, yeah, I can get on with this. I've got a positive frame of mind. Let's just do this. But then there are days where I just really struggle. Um, and again, it's not a sign of weakness. In actual fact, I think it's it shows a human inside. You know, too many people do videos where they don't really show the dark days, the cloudy days. It's just all ray and sunshine. And that's not reality and that's not life. So I wanted really to, to come on and talk about bereavement and how how hard it's been for me. But actually doing a lot of research online of, of strategies how to cope is a really good source of, of a lifeline for me. Um, and being able to maybe speak to someone who can understand bereavement or who can give you coping mechanisms or strategies, because everyone is different, not one size fits all. And I'm not gonna say, uh, going online, doing a little bit of reading or opening your heart to, to someone who can maybe give you those systems of coping. Um, is a, it's not always gonna be for you. So you're gonna, you know, you're gonna have to do your own research of, of what actually is gonna be beneficial to you and your own circumstance because everyone is different. So in terms of grief, we all go things we all go through things differently and bereavement is is a tough one. So there are charities out there that you can reach out to. Just go online and do your own research wherever your base, your location, your country. There are going to be places that you can go and talk to. There might be peer to peer support groups that you can reach out to. Don't be afraid to to kind of open your heart and really speak to someone because suffering in silence is tough um, and I know from experience that it doesn't work because you know everyone needs a little bit of help from time to time uh, and mental health and mental health we don't necessarily talk about it enough you know it's all around us we we know that there are things out there to support but actually some people don't want to admit that they're struggling that mental health is, is a thing for them um, because of Barado, or they they think, oh no, I can cope. I don't I don't need any interventions and things like that. And believe me, I I I know exactly how that feels because I I'm in that that situation. I don't necessarily want to reach out because I think no, I'm a strong person. I can get through it. But you know, I do go through days of feeling completely anxious, and although. You know, I try and think positively. I can't always change the way I feel. And that's not a bad thing. So in terms of mental health, do do be open. Do speak to your physician. Do look at what charities and organisations are out there in your own location or your, your country where you're based. Do have a search and maybe speak to someone who you, who you trust. Because we all need help. We all need help from time to time. And that is not a sign that you're not coping or that you're not able to think properly or, you know, do those sorts of things. So please do reach out to someone that you feel that you can speak to about these things. And, and don't hide away because that's not going to, to be beneficial for you moving forward. That's not going to help your situation. And I'm a fine one to talk because I don't necessarily want to reach out to the right people. You've got to be ready for it as well. And you've got to kind of think in your mind, actually, I can, I can do this. Let's just go and talk. And from talking, there are actions you can do. And it's an amazing feeling when you've, when you've done that because you feel that you've achieved something, even if it's something very small. So don't feel alone. Don't put too much pressure on yourself because we are in a world where there is always so much pressure. But just know, just be yourself and know that there are many people in the world who are going through 
similar sorts of things and mental health is a big one so don't don't be afraid to to reach out and, and admit that you're struggling now the third area that i wanted to talk about and i won't dive too deeply into to this video because i think it's quite a complex thing eating disorders so for me i've always had disordered eating i struggled for very many years with eating uh, this could be eating too much or not eating enough so i there's never been one set thing for me i've never had one or the other i've always been at either end of the spectrum eating too much or not eating at all and this is an area that i think is is something that I've never really dived too deeply onto the channel, if at all, actually. I don't think I have. And recently, I've been struggling. I've been struggling to, to eat anything. And it's something that I, I know is happening to me. And it's recognising those signs. It's recognising, okay, so here I am again. I need to maybe reach out to someone to su support me. Now, I went through before the pandemic i went through a program to to an eating disorder specialist psychologist to to be able to support in what it is about food that was worrying me where where am i needing to focus my time and attention what is it about food that scares me um and i i think it all kind of boiled down to i was always the taller child at school i was always the broader child and also having a visual impairment, I could never really see my my own image in the mirror. I could never really appreciate my own body. I was always wanting something different. And I could only feel what I what I was like. I could never really appreciate me for me. And I had a very distorted image of what I thought I looked like. And it probably really stemmed a lot from that. And it was it was something that I kind of let, never really dived into and never really kind of thought about too much. And it was only when I was going through this program this with this eating disorder specialist, she was actually kind of diving into some really deep areas of my own psyche. And it kind of came back out that it, it probably was a lot to do with my vision and not being able to really appreciate myself for who I was. I thought I was fat and I probably wasn't um <clears throat> and it it kind of stuck with me ever since so i would eat a lot and then i wouldn't eat anything so it was a constant yo-yo of those feelings of disordered eating and i've never really got really to the bottom of of why but over the last month or so i've not really eaten and it's it's probably affected me more than it did when I when I went and had you know this support from the program a couple of years ago maybe three four years ago um and just not not eating is I know I know it's not good it, of course it's not good but it was I suppose in a way for me a way of coping with my own personal situation my own life circumstances what's happening the my grand dying uh, and, and lots of other things going on in my life and it was a way of me just coping with everything that's going on and that was the only way that I could control stuff that was happening in my life and through not eating I think other things are going on you know things I'm not thinking clearly I'm I haven't got a, a lot of energy I'm I'm struggling you know with a lot of other things so it has a huge knock on effect, not doing what I what I should be doing. And obviously over exercising, going to the gym, doing my run of three miles a day, really pushing myself and actually not having any food is probably not a great thing. And again, here I am being totally real to you guys, because I think it's I think it's such an important area to talk about. Um, and, and my whole kind of thinking around eating disorder and and having anorexia is is something that I've not really spoken about. And a lot of people are like, well, you don't look anorexic. No, but that 
that again is it shows a lack of knowledge and understanding because although someone might not be perceived in in what anorexia it shows it doesn't mean that they don't have that condition you don't have to be skin and bone frankly to look to, to be anorexic you there are lots of other factors surrounding that so although i might not look that i i have been diagnosed with that because of the way that you know i think and i feel and my eating habits and stuff like that is you know ticks all of the boxes of anorexia for, for me at this moment so i i haven't uh, reached out to any of the uh, support groups for anorexia and i think that's a decision that i should be able to make as and when i feel i need to um i have contacted my doctors um and uh, i'm hoping to to have a conversation with them in june but what I'm really trying to get at is it, it's not always sunshine and roses in my life. Um, and I just wanted to come and do a chit chat about all of the things that I've kind of been thinking about and what's been happening with me over the last five years in 2022. Hoping that this year kind of like starts to pick up for me a bit. Um, I think once I've spoken to my doctors and, and got the help that I need, things might move back to some sort of normality for me because right now your girl is going through it. So it's, uh, it, it's, a, it's a tough one. And um, if anyone has any ideas or suggestions or groups that they think that would be really helpful, please put them in the comments below because I, you know, I know that you guys have got so much, so much knowledge in there that you can share. So please do share anything that you feel would be useful to me. Um, even if there's any like blogs or vlogs or people that I could kind of listen to or reach out to, that would be so helpful, whether it's on bereavement, mental health or eating disorders, it would just be so, so helpful. And on that note, guys, I'm gonna love you and leave you for now, but be rest assured, there will be a much more positive video coming very shortly. Stay tuned, subscribe if you haven't already, and just remember, I love you guys, and thank you so much for all of your continued support. It does mean the world to me. So take care and stay safe. And hopefully, I'm gonna end this video. Bye, guys.